Hey, what's up guys? I've got some really good news. I heard from Russell this morning that the parts for the Freebird are actually starting to ship. Yay. Uh, anyway, what I've been up to lately is I've been working on one of the Super B builds. And I took one of the yellow housings that I had and put the board in it so as to preserve the one uh, that is part of this bumblebee. Anyway, they, they are serialized. You will find this serial number on the frame inside here. You can see it on this one. I'm not sure how well you can see that, but they're here. And uh, I got several of these from EAA a while ago. Um, I don't know if they still have any more. I don't think I'm going to need any more uh, because probably not ever going to have another opportunity to uh, do these new old stock bumblebee builds. Uh, this one's getting a 400 millimeter barrel. I'm working on making a shroud for it. I haven't quite finished it. But here's the end nut in the barrel. So it'll be like that. I've got a nice cone in there. And I'm thinking that this cone might improve accuracy because as, as the BBs come out you don't want any rotation on them because you can't stabilize a spear by putting a twist on it like you can a rifle bullet and uh, it'll just tend to corkscrew about 40 yards out and then go off into whatever direction that it uh, decides to after it starts tumbling off the axis moving that way. So the theory behind this is that if you just had a flat crown on a barrel like completely flat like that as the BB leaves if there's any imperfections in the crown it will get higher pressure in uh, a certain spot um, and then that will give the BB some spin so the idea behind this is to cone it out that way as the BB leaves the barrel uh, around here inside the cone the gas will be able to come out around it in a more even fashion. So we'll see if that works. Anyway, it's pretty. One of the things that I'm doing to this is uh, I swapped the valve body off of the hopper magazine for the 30 round magazine valve body. The reason I did that is because the older valve bodies there is a retention pocket in the top here and it just holds the BBs in a lot of times people uh, they'll contact me and send me a picture of their magazine because they think something's wrong with it because they'll see a BB sitting in it uh, like that out of center and they'll think that that's causing their problems that's just there to hold the BB in position and to keep them from all rolling out. Uh, so, yeah, you know, I've gone over this before, but uh, BB centering is an attempt to uh, get the BB in the very center of that hole, which I'm not a proponent of. If you've watched my channel for any amount of time, I've already ran it on that, so I'm not going to get into that. But, the reason I swapped the valve body out with the one on the 30 round magazine is because they uh, they must use a different tool 
on the newer valve body than they did on the old one and that little pocket is a lot smoother on the um, older valve bodies. I even had one uh, a brand new Blackbird that I got from uh, when I bought um, Drawsmax. I bought all of his stock out when he went out of business and one of the Blackbirds I got from him the valve body was off center it sat a little high you could actually see a wedge of space in here where it was like cockeyed and the pocket was drilled way too deep so I actually had to switch it out with another valve body and all I had was on hand was spare valve bodies for like I just took one off of a 30 round magazine and I, I was noticing man this thing works really good so I got to looking at it and then I could see uh, I took a picture of this and here it is you can't really tell much from the picture but you can tell a difference by physically looking at it so uh, that brings me to the point of the the uh, dual hook um, valve body combo and uh, for those of you I get asked about it quite a lot uh, it's a really cool idea because on the regular ones there's only one hook that grabs in here this isn't really a problem with the 30 round magazines because they're made out of metal but the hopper magazine gets torqued uh, when you put it into uh, the magazine well and it engages with that hook because there's only one especially with the Magnus Op seal because the Magnus Op seal is designed to press on the valve body so the dual hook uh, design has two hooks one that engages here and another slot for another one on the barrel nut to engage here uh, that's all good and well but to do that modification, they still use the current production valve bodies, which, in my opinion, are um, not nearly as good as the old ones. So the way I mitigate this problem, this alignment problem, is inside here I will take this apart and I'll show you a little bit closer when I get it apart I put two pieces of Gorilla Tape in right here and they press against that side of the valve body that wants to torque out of alignment <coughs> and what they also do is they snug everything up it's not nearly as snug when you have the dual hook uh, valve body barrel nut combo uh, it's also a lot less expensive so that is my preferred method I've got them both ways I just prefer this uh, some people you know can't stand the idea of having their build done with tape anywhere near it but the jokes on them because I use fiberglass reinforced strapping tape to hold the buttons in. All right, I don't think I've ever gone over these solenoids and how to solder them and desolder them and um, other ways to do it if you're not set up like I am. But each wire goes into the back of the solenoid through little holes. And if you have solder sucker, it'll make your life a lot easier. So we just want to get all that solder out of that hole. So when we put the new board wires in it, we can solder back in that hole. Now, if if you bought one 
and it came disassembled for any reason. Uh, it's probably going to be cut. These wires are probably going to be cut off there. And on ones like that, there's plenty of solder to just put your wire back to it and heat it up and it'll stick. But we don't do that here. Okay, a few things I want to talk about while we're in here is from the factory with uh, these draws, a lot of times this screw won't be tightened down and what can happen is the solenoid can slide forward and that will put your solenoid striker, hammer, whatever you want to call it going in too far. Now, this striker needs to have some momentum to open the valve and if it's right up on it it's not going to have enough momentum to open the valve. So this is a common problem uh, that people run into and they're asking me about it. Well this is one of the things I tell them to look for and in that case what you would do is loosen the barrel up here just depending on what kind of barrel you have pull the two halves of it apart you might need to loosen this so your solenoid cover will clear it after you've gotten the two halves apart maybe a quarter of an inch or so you lift up on the front and then just pull back and it'll come off and it goes back on like so and then it grabs up here and just make sure all that's aligned before you tighten this up again uh, also while we're in here this is kind of rare for bumblebees in here there is a spacer you see it it's like a washer most of the time these bumblebees don't even have these there used to be some debate on what they were for because you normally see two of them in a blackbird I believe what they're for is to set the distance that your barrel threads go into the barrel nut to give you some resistance here on the barrel seal so yeah, after a while you weren't getting a very good seal theoretically you could take this out and it would push your seal out a little further uh, now this that seal protrusion really comes into play with Magnus Op seals because it presses on the valve body pretty firmly and to get that proper fit um, it was designed for blackbirds so the two washers in here will give you the proper fit now on things like this where you've only got one or in most cases you don't have any of those I make um, a little ring just out of music wire and these rings are 0 0.05 inches in diameter and having this in here will give you the correct uh, spacing that you need for the right seal protrusion of your Magnus Op seal I'll show you when I get it back together so we've got our Magnus Op seal in it and to get these in they're kind of a pain in the butt I like to use a screwdriver and just press them in so when our barrel screws in, it's going to push out on it a little bit. Um, and you can see the one hook on this side that I was talking about. And the reason that I'm wearing gloves, well I'm not wearing gloves right now because I don't want to get any 
grease um, on my gloves. But the reason I'm wearing gloves is because the yellow bodies of these bumblebees, if you look at them wrong, they'll get stained. And since this is a brand new flawless one, I don't want to get it stained with anything. And also, if you're interested, I have one more that I'm going to do this with for someone. Uh, and that someone could be you. Okay, I've got the 400 millimeter barrel on and it's pushing on the seal just a little bit. The spacer I made is in here and it, it gives us good protrusion. And I will show you the problem with the single hook design. Okay, now it's pressing on there, but you see, see that wiggle room? Well, the seal pushes it out so you have more space on this side. I don't know how well you can see, and we are talking about a gnat's ass here, but that gnat's ass is very important. So we're going to put the tape in here and snug everything up. I told you I used two pieces. I cut one a little bit narrower than the other one and put the narrow one down first and then I put the wider one over it so it overlaps it. So you can see how the first one should look when you have it in there. And I just slide them in from the top and we'll cut that excess off after we, we'll do it right now and uh, then we'll put the other one in. And there's the other one in. And you can see I've got it coming up on the uh, left side and it's completely covering the other piece of tape. Also, you can't do this with the barrel nut in there. I wanted to check the protrusion with just the single spacer in here that it came with. And this is what we came up with. And this is too much show you see your magazine it's just you could force it but you're you're deforming the seal so we're definitely going back with our homemade shim now just to be clear all of that stuff with the valve body and alignment and this and that and the other it's not really crucial unless you're getting way up into the high rounds per minute like 4,000 and whatnot so I do catch some flack from the Russians it'll be like hey why are you not like this part they don't buy this part I'm like hey well you know what either prove me wrong or make it better so uh, what I'm gonna this is about like if you're if you're wanting if you have a classic drozd and you want to make it full auto you know it won't work because the boards don't have this for your hopper magazine this jack for your hopper magazine as you can see in there and the switches I'm not sure if all classic boards have these smaller switches, uh, but the Blackbird boards have these bigger ones. This is actually a knockoff board, believe it or not. It's an exact replica from Drawsmax. But uh, anyway, because the switches are narrower, they also made the sliders narrower, so that part won't fit over the switch right there so what I do when I run into this is because you're probably not going to have a set of blackbird sliders if you get a blackbird board 
I take my Dremel tool with this little diamond wheel in it and I cut out, I think like two notches. One, two, yeah, cut in there. And then go over here on this side and cut in there two notches. And then these uh, older style sliders fit right on those switches. Okay, for this one, um, I actually had to back the solenoid off because it was going in too far after I put in that spacer. Uh, now, if you're just doing like the, the 1200 round a minute mod on a classic draws or a bumblebee where you get the hopper and you basically turn it into a blackbird or if you're just chipping a blackbird and uh, you're not going to up the voltage or anything. Don't don't mess around with any of this stuff. Just leave it like it's set at the factory. So back in the day, you'll see if you get on the old uh, BB Machine Gun Owners Group forum, you might uh, get to reading in there, and you'll see them talking about uh, the amber-colored barrel seals and the black barrel seals. They thought that the amber-colored barrel seals came along to let air in front of the BBs to tune them down for places like Canada and other other places that have regulations on uh, the velocity that these things can shoot. And also they, they talk about adjusting the solenoid to make it shoot faster. If you... Well, the, the barrel seals, you know, I've done a test on those. I'll try to put a card up there if I can remember. But there's not really a lot of difference. I think the amber barrel seals turned out to work a little bit better than the original black ones. The black ones are the older seals. Uh, and if you try to adjust the solenoid to make it open the valve more, if you're just using stock voltage, what's going to happen? is because you bring it closer it's not going to have enough inertia to open the valve all the way and if you try to use uh, high pressure air above 800 psi you're going to have more pressure behind that valve than co2 will give you so it'll be even harder to open the valve so it's best if you're not upping the voltage and you're just running it off of CO2 to leave the solenoid where it is at the factory. And uh, you can start playing around with it when you up the voltage though. Something else that isn't really important unless you start adding voltage and shooting high pressure air is you need a latch plate. I'm not going to get into how I install these but it's very important because this is a polymer frame and your little hole for the metal latch to catch on. Um, this is metal and it's on polymer so it just connects in here. Uh, it holds the magazine in there. It keeps it from dropping down. Well that latch hole will wear and your magazine will sit lower and lower and lower uh, away from the valve body. So eventually your valve body will be way down here and you'll be shooting BBs into your um, barrel nut into the bottom of it and it, it'll plow up a bunch of metal in here, your um, breech, and it'll mushroom your breech into your barrel nut and it'll get so bad that uh, BBs won't be able to pass through it anymore. And by that point, to try to fix it, you have to take the barrel off. And your barrel is going to be, your, your breech is going to be so mushroomed in the barrel nut. And more than likely, you're going to snap the barrel threads off just trying to get the barrel out. So to prevent that, we put a metal plate on the back here. And it also gives you vertical alignment to your valve which is important when you get up into high fire rates and uh, upping the voltage and air so you don't bend or break your valve the uh, only valves that i've had a problem with that really happening 
with or the titanium valves. I told them about it, how they could fix it. I don't know if they did, but I stopped using them because they never said they were going to do anything about it. So for all intents and purposes, this is now a Super B. I, I just put it in this configuration to show you something because he's going to get a few other goodies with it. But I wanted to point out <coughs> the um, muzzle on here. The ones for the Drozd, the classic Drozd, and the Bumblebee are short and stubby like this. And I'm pretty sure you can still get them on eBay because the one for the Blackbird sticks out about that far and looks kind of goofy on them when you're trying to run them short like this. So I just wanted to uh, mention that before I get this thing all together.